hey everyone, I'm going to cover the 10 things that are guaranteed to happen if you follow this path of emotional sobriety. I've seen it happen time and time again. The first one, and the most important really, even though they're all important, is that when we rely only on ourselves and our higher power for our source of happiness, we find more peace than we have ever felt before in our lifetime. That is guaranteed. This is why you have to have a higher power. If we could have done this on our own, we would have, but we can't. We have to have a power greater than we are. When we recognize that we are out of emotional balance, and that is going to happen like for the rest of our lives, that's just going to happen from time to time, we see it immediately and we have the tools to get back on track. If we've said something bad to somebody else, hurt their feelings, or we took an action that we shouldn't have taken, we know right away. And we're able to get ourselves back in line and back on track. We know how to apologize, to make an amend. The other person feels better, and so do we. So that's the second thing that is a guarantee if you follow the path of emotional sobriety. Okay, this one is a hard one, but we learn that confronting our pain, our past pain, is necessary for us to transform into the new person that we want to be. We call that the beast within, and unless we confront the beast within, we can't get better. I mean, unless a doctor diagnoses us with an issue and prescribes whatever medication is necessary for us to get better, usually we're not just gonna get better. The same is true with emotional sobriety. We have to confront the things that made us emotionally not well. Boy, do I love this guarantee. You are going to learn that self-love is a necessary part of having a balanced and healthy and happy life. I used to think that when I showed my self-love, it was selfish. That is so not true. When we love ourselves, we are much better able to love other people. Think of those people you've met who are grumpy, irritable, not pleasant to be around, in a bad mood. They probably don't love themselves. And it's probably because they weren't loved at some point in their lives and they know no other way. But if you want to be emotionally well, you have to love yourself. So this one is very eye-opening and it is a guarantee. If we do a personal inventory every single day, it's no big deal. You know, we think of a personal inventory, naming the things that we did right, and the things that we did wrong, and the things that we could have done better each day. We think of that as a hard task, and maybe one that we want to avoid. But if you want to be emotionally sober and follow this path that just rocks, y'all, it's, it's so awesome. You have to learn to do a personal inventory on a regular basis. I, I do it continuously and it is not hard. It just becomes second nature. So, so I have no idea how you pray or if you pray. If you get on your knees, if you do it at the end of the day, if you do it throughout your day, or maybe it's just meditation or your thoughts, but however you pray, you are going to learn the most important prayer in the world. And that is for God to use you as a vessel and help you serve your higher purpose. Because you know what, if we are doing that, serving what we're here to do, our personal higher purpose, we are going to be so happy. How can you not be? Are you familiar with the Enneagram? I am a two, and that is a helper, 
and an eight. That is a challenger, and that's another story in and of itself. But I really recommend you do the Enneagram and find out what number you are. It, it just tells you so much about who you are. But as a two on the Enneagram, a helper, I thought I had to give, give, give. And the reason is that I thought that is I'm addicted to admiration. And you get lots of admiration when you're giving all the time. But you learn on this path that you have to both give and receive to be healthy. If you're in a relationship that only takes from you or where you are only taking, that is so not healthy. And you're gonna learn that on this path. Here is the eighth guarantee that you will learn when you are practicing emotional sobriety. And this is, gosh, this is a good one. You're going to learn how important boundaries are and how to make them work for you and even others in your life. In former times, I didn't have any boundaries. I just would do anything I could to please someone else. But you know what? That is not the right way to live. By having boundaries, we follow our own inner guides, our own rules, and we don't let other people breach the things that we are holding most dear to us. You're going to learn about good boundaries and it's going to make you so much happier. So this is the ninth guarantee of this path. And that is that you will discover that connection is where divinity lies. When you are connected with another and you are really walking the path of emotional sobriety, not depending on them for your happiness, but sharing your happiness with them and them sharing their happiness with you, you are going to find um, a euphoria almost. You will experience divinity dwelling right there. We are not created to be alone. We are created to be in connection, in community with others. And this path shows you that in spades. And here is the 10th guarantee of the emotional sobriety path. And that is that no matter what, we are still going to screw up. We are just fallible humans, and that's how it is. And it doesn't matter if you've been on this path one year, one month, one day, or 50 years. You're going to screw up. That's just part of being human. But you know what the difference is? When you're on this path, you know how to upright yourself, brush yourself off, and start all over again. It's a guarantee. So those are the 10 guarantees of emotional sobriety.